Hi, I'm Adam in Wales and this is one of my rare review videos because, uh, well I wanted to do a review um, because I hadn't seen any yet for Baron Park Bad News Bears uh, and I've really been enjoying it recently. Um, now Baron Park is a game which came out in 2017, a tile laying game. It, it feels very similar to Uwe Rosenberg's Patchwork and Patchwork came first, but Patchwork is a solely two-player game, um, a really, really popular one, and one that I really, really like. And I was amazed to find that Phil Walker-Harding, uh, who is the designer of Sushi Go and Emotep, uh, and many, many other great games, had managed to simplify Patchwork. Patchwork was already quite a simple game, but Baron Park was that bit simpler, and it played up to four players. Now, Baron Park was one of my favourite games of 2017. I knew it was going to be an instant sort of classic, um, and I found over the last couple of years that I've played it sporadically. I haven't played it an absolute ton, and that's because it's so simple. Uh, it, it's kind of its greatest strength is that it's a, a real family game. You know, you can get anyone to play a game of Baron Park and everybody will like it, everybody will enjoy it. But whether a gamer really has enough to get their teeth into with a game of Baron Park, uh, I'm not quite sure. I enjoyed it for the occasional game, maybe with people who are fairly new to gaming. Um, I found the setup a little bit of a pain, having to get all the tiles out and place them in places and work out how many tiles for each individual uh, different play account, um, that was always a bit of a pain and there was no great storage solution in the box to keep everything neat and make that any easier. So there were slight barriers to getting it played. I was very interested to see whether Bad News Bears would change any of that and make me want to play this game more. Let's have a look first at how Baron Park works. And then we'll go on and look at the expansion. In Baron Park, each player is building their own zoo, which is populated only by bears and koalas, which are not bears. On a player's turn, they place a tile from their supply onto their own player board. If this covers an icon, they then collect a tile from the central board corresponding to that icon and place it into their supply. If they cover several icons, they will gain several tiles on their turn. No tile can be placed over the pit, and if a board is entirely filled except for the pit, then a bear statue is placed into it, scoring points. And the statues reduce in value as more are taken, so there's a race to get the boards filled quickly and score the highest points. If a construction crew is covered, then a new board is added to a player's park, and once four boards are completely filled in a single player's park, then the game ends and points are counted. The players score points for each tile on their board and for achieving variable goals, for example, having three polar bear tiles or six green areas, etc. The deck for each tile type is limited and the highest scoring tiles sit at the top, so the entire game is based around beating your opponents in the race for the highest scoring tiles. So that's Baron Park. Beautiful. Um, simple, elegant design, some variety in those different objectives that make the game feel slightly different, subtly different from game to game, but essentially you're going to discover everything that this game has to offer fairly quickly. So let's see what the expansion adds. Bad News Bears introduces a monorail into each player's park, and when a player places a green tile, i.e. a river, a food street, or a toilet, or a playground, they may place a tower on it. And if future green tiles are placed exactly three squares away, they can be connected by the monorail. Each monorail tile is worth points, which reduce as they're gathered by the players in a similar fashion to the tiles from the main game. Each player may only have one monorail, and it must be continuous with no branches, so careful placement of these green tiles is essential. The second thing added by the expansion is the large, high-scoring grizzly bear tiles. These are freely available to all players, but they must exchange one green tile and one white one to take a grizzly tile. These tiles take up a lot of space, so to accommodate this, the expansion introduces a fifth board for each player. Now the game ends when one player has filled five boards instead of the base game's four. And finally, the expansion introduces some really interesting and challenging objectives to use alongside those in the base box and to add some variety to your games. So it's rare that I would look at an expansion and say to you, if you didn't like the base game, try it with the expansion and it might change your mind. Usually that's a bit of a fool's errand. Most expansions uh, complicate, they make it harder to get into the game, um, they don't usually fix the game. If anything, they make it 
more complicated, more convoluted. There's something there for people who already love the game, but it's unlikely to change anyone's mind. Now, I would say Bad News Bears is exactly that type of expansion. It's exactly the type of expansion that might change someone's mind. And it's actually improved the game immeasurably in my eyes, for me. Okay, I can see that Baron Park was a great product. It was gonna to appeal to many, many people, a really wide group of people, but it wasn't a great gamers game. And Bad News Bears, don't get me wrong, this is still simple stuff, but I find it challenging, really challenging. I, 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 you've got so many things to be thinking about now. Do I go for filling all the spaces in the park uh, and, and try and fill the balls before other players and get those little statues that score me lots of points? Or shall I focus on that monorail? That's worth a lot of points, particularly if other people are ignoring it. But it's hard to do it because I've got to place those green tiles and they get in the way of everything else that I'm doing. Or shall I focus on those grizzly tiles? I mean, they're really big. They fill up loads of spaces. So I can get my board filled really quickly, but they're hard to come by because I've got to have lots of spare tiles available to me. The great thing about those grizzly tiles is because they cover up lots of the board, sometimes you can cover up multiple icons with a single placement. And so then that gives you a surplus of those icons, which you can then spend to buy new grizzly tiles. But how are you gonna fit them in? Particularly if other people are snapping up the really desirable shapes before you can get there. Um, the fifth board gives us a bit more flexibility and actually it doesn't add to the game length because someone's going to be using those grizzly tiles even if you're not and so the game is going to come to a close much quicker uh, than you'd expect. So actually I'd say the duration is similar to the base game of Baron Park. Um, the new objectives are really, really um, uh, challenging. Again, that's that's the word really. I find it, I find it hard suddenly. And, and, and interesting and fun and different every play because I can try these different strategies and those objectives drive me down um, different routes. No longer are the objectives, you know, the, the base game, it had a few interesting ones and then it had the really simple ones like you're gonna score points if you're the first person to get three panda tiles down or if you're the first one to get three koala tiles down. But now we've got these really interesting ones about, um, you know, uh, positioning the green tiles so that they cross between the different boards or, um, you know, positioning things in the corners of the boards um, or having a certain amount of space between different types of tiles or placing tiles in such a way that you don't cover any icons or perhaps placing tiles in such a way that you cover multiple icons. And these are really um, neat little challenging puzzly sort of pieces. Um, Overall, I would say this hasn't improved the setup. In fact, it's made it worse. Uh, the game takes up more table space now. Everything doesn't fit in the base game box, so now you're gonna have to carry two boxes around with you. The tower pieces are a little bit fiddly to put together, and uh, the, you know it'd be lovely if they were in a nice, neat plastic or something like that. But that's all the negatives, and those negatives were largely true of the base game. The positives, though, are oh, that this, this game has just been turned from a game that you, you're gonna wanna play sporadically and you're gonna wanna play with newcomers to the hobby and family gamers to a game that you can really play with people who enjoy, um, you know, proper meaty gameplay. Okay, this is not a heavy game by any means. It's probably not even medium weight. Okay, we're still talking light weight here, but this is a game that I think, um, uh, your, your your sort of game groups are going to enjoy. It's a game that you can get out and play at game night and not feel like, um, you know, it's a, it's an appetizer. No, this could be a main event. Um, so I've really, really enjoyed Bad News Bears. Uh, I think it's, it's well worth checking out. I think it's a great production from Lookout Games. Uh, and I think if you didn't like Bear and Puck, maybe give it another try and stick the monorails in there and see what you think then. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please watch some of my others on my channel, Adam's Board Game Wales. On Board Game Geek, I'm Adam78. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at Board Game Wales. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. All the best.